So, Kamiata. You can get face fun. I wanna knock to your pupil and into your eye. She wanna fuck out no clown, my buddy, she buddy, her pages get ripped to the side. I've been making my way through the desk of my mental and strength. Kamiata is an artist who's founded possibly the most popular underground collective in the scene called Midnight Society. Just a few of the artists in Midnight include artists like Young Bambi, Original God, and The Virus and Antidote, who's prided songs like Gnarly Bastard by XXXTentacion, and Rest in Peace by Bones. The list goes on. And Kamiata has also played a huge role in the popularity and overall style of trap metal. Not only this, but he's also gained over 500,000 monthly listeners on Spotify, and also has songs like Product of Drugs that have been streamed well over 25 million times across all platforms. So who is Kamiata? How did did he get his name? How did he start Midnight Society? Is he worth listening to? In today's video, I'll be going over all these questions and also be giving a breakdown of his discography later in the video, so stay tuned. Giovanni Duncan, also known as Kamiata, was born in Southeast DC, September 21st, 1995. With most of his family being mainly from Panama, a country in Central America, which he describes his people as basically Jamaican people who speak Spanish. During Kamiata's early life, he was mostly raised on army bases like Andrews Air Force Base, up until he ended up moving to the more general areas within Maryland, which is where he lived for most of his life. Kami's school experience was a rough one. Even though he was achieving good grades throughout elementary school and middle school, that didn't mean he wasn't a badass kid. He says he would constantly get into fights, get in trouble with teachers, he would even stay after class to steal money out of a teacher's purse once they left for lunch. During this time, Kami's main musical inspirations being that he was surrounded by Jamaican culture was reggae. He even originally wanted to be a reggae artist, being inspired by people like Buju Banton, Beanie Man, and Wayne Wonder. He would even listen to mixed tapes on a boombox that would include these classic 90s to 2000s reggae artists, and eventually, by a complete accident, even record himself DJing the tapes on a boombox, which he would listen to it with his dad on the way to work. But this was really only the beginning of Kami's musical exploration, and he would eventually get into hip hop through a Kanye West college dropout tape that he found just sitting in the sun in front of his house. I mean, I guess it was truly meant to be. And from there, he would listen to that same college dropout tape every day for well over a year. At this time, he'd also eventually get into artists such as, obviously, Kanye West, Kid Cudi, and Lil Wayne, which he says for a while he would literally just try to impersonate Lil Wayne. Anyways, eventually he would continue to explore music and eventually discover tons of alternative grunge punk bands, such as Soundgarden, Alice in Chains, Slipknot, Deftones, and one of his most prominent inspirations, Nirvana. And this would be around the time that Kami was entering high school. And then I want to say like ninth to 10th grade, I like really chilled out for the most part. I got more mature because like, I don't know, like I was always punished as a child. Like punished as in like I couldn't go outside because I was always like doing fuck shit. And after calming down a bit, he decided to stop getting in trouble and he would eventually start exploring music creation. And he would eventually get a guitar and record memos and songs off his old Android phone that he had at the time, up until it broke, which was the reason he decided to transition into rap. Starting off in late 2014, early into his rap career, he was a boom bap, anti-mainstream type rapper, which to be fair to Kami is pretty typical start for most rappers. And from here, it would eventually lead Kami to drop his very first nine track EP on January 4th, 2015 called Yada Yada. This tape was dropped mainly on Bandcamp is basically what I just described. And although it definitely wasn't unlistable, it just, you know, it wasn't really Kami. But he would eventually grow out of this style due to the classic trap that all men fall for. A girl that Kami was seeing at the time said that she wanted to take things slow, but stay close, that, that kind of shit. You know, I'll just let Kami describe it. So then I go on to Graham, I go on her Graham. I go on her comments and I just see these niggas arguing over her. And uh, one nigga was like, don't talk to my girl like that. And I was like, Yo, girl. So I like click this nigga Graham. Mind you, I've been trying to see this bitch for like two months, and she's like blowing me off. And then I go to his Graham, and there's like pictures of them laid up from like two days ago. So, bro, I'll tell you, like, bro, like, this is probably the second angriest I've ever been in my life. It was one in the morning, and I'm in my parents' crib. And mind you, if I would have been, I tried to call this bitch. The first time I called her, she answered like she just woke up, and I was so mad, bro, I had to hang up because I didn't know how to talk to her without yelling. And mind you, if I would have screamed, bro, my mom would have came in there and ended my existence, nigga, like. And after this, his personality basically did a 180. He no longer cared about the lyrical, the woke, anything like that. He completely changed. So at this point in his career, he was just trying to finish up high school. He was pretty much over high school and had basically given up on getting good grades. He wasn't flunking, but he had like a 2.9, which isn't really that good if you want to get into college. But this didn't mean he was dropping out. He was eventually put into a program to help him finish up high school, which is a program that helps people coming out of prison and people with bad childhoods. 
In this program, they assign you a part-time job, which is where Kami got his name. Up to this point, Kami wasn't even Kami Yada. He was going by Motive, which, you know, fitted his boom bap, lyrical, spherical, you, you know, that thing. The job they give you is a job at a company called Blackboard. While working at this company, he ended up coming across his name by, drum will please, just randomly thinking about it. Which after he thought about it, he said, why not look it up to see if it has any kind of meanings? Which it did. Kami is the Japanese word for God, and Yada is the Hebrew word for spiritual, which together they mean spiritually there, just like a lasting presence. So from here, he liked the name and even used it as a part of the intro for his sort of first album called Crossfade. Crossfade was released May 29th, 2015, and it was kind of an intro into a trap sound that Kami Yada was experimenting with at the time. And like I said, this project also introduced Kami name change with the first track being called Who the Fuck is Kami. And it also features a now familiar sample on Tales of a Renegade, which we'll get into later. Moving into his next project called Deep Space. Deep Space is a nine track long project and is a transition into Kami's bone sound type era, but how did he make this transition? It first started when Kami had been scrolling through Insta and being that he was heavily into the work of artists like Joey Badass, Pro Era, and Earl Sweatshirt, he was following a fan page of Earl that posted a link to Spooky Black's page. From here, it would be his gateway into the underground. And from here, he would end up finding out about an artist I'm sure most of us are aware of, Bones. He found out about Bones from one of Spooky Black's tracks, If You Had a Zoom, I Hate You, and from here he would begin to listen to a lot of Bones. In most of the tracks at the time, he would get heavily inspired by Bones, which shows in this tape with Deep Space having a lot of elements that Bones was popular for at the time. But even still, I think this EP was solid, not crazy by any means, but definitely a step up from his previous work. But what about Midnight Society? So on track 7 of Deep Space, there is a track called Tales of a Space God, which features a sample from a show called Are You Afraid of the Dark, which is basically the Nickelodeon version of Goosebumps. And on the show, you know it, I'll let you listen. And if a computer virus got into your head, there's no telling what might happen, or where the destruction would end. Submitted for the approval of the Midnight Society, I call this story... The Tale of the Renegade Virus. So after the release of this track, Kami would end up linking with a producer known as LA Beats, or as we know him, the virus and antidote. And it was at this time that Kami was looking to start a group, due to him feeling that no one had a similar vision or even believed that he could rap at all. And while looking for ideas, he landed back on that same name, Midnight Society. And from here, he would continue to hit up artists that he believed had talent on SoundCloud, lower tier artists, and eventually developed a very, very solid roster of musicians, producers, and just overall creative talent, which this was all in lead up to 2016. On January 11th, 2016, a track called Rest in Peace by Bones would be released and produced by Midnight's very own, The Virus and Antidote. This track was a huge step forward, not only for Virus's career, but it also went on to influence Kamiata to try something that only a handful of artists were pushing at the time, Trap Metal. Bones' track, Rest in Peace, had a part at the end that went a little something like this. at the end of the song was loud, aggressive, and dark, and it ended up encouraging Kami to give screaming a shot, which he would end up doing. But at the beginning, he couldn't really scream. But this didn't really stop him. He just kept going and going and going until he'd get bad migraines. And after a while, he was eventually able to just really scream. And this style ended up fitting Kami perfectly, merging his love for darker, horrorcore aesthetics with his love for loud, heavy trap style music. By February, Kami had released a collection of singles and would eventually be put together and called Lost in Space Volume 1, or also known as Static Depression which featured huge tracks that are still doing numbers today, such as Adrenaline, which one of Midnight's members known as Rare Akuma would release a remix known as Raging Fist, which ended up blowing up on meme pages and also on SoundCloud. This tape also featured another track known as Tokyo Ghoul Freestyle, which as the title suggests was filled with tie-ins of anime references, which he later talked about as he didn't really want to be boxed in as an anime rapper. So going forward, he would like limit his references, which I think is a good thing. I think trying too hard for an audience or an aesthetic just comes off as like weird. Maybe it's just me, but yeah, but anyways, A Tale of a Ghost, produced by The Virus and Antidote. N need, need I say more? Continuing into 2016, Kami would end up dropping a spree of singles, including tracks like Restraints, MVP, and Adult Swim, 
which ended up being one of his most popular tracks he's dropped on SoundCloud to this day. Continuing his consistency into 2017, where he would drop his EP on January 30th, 2017, called Kill the Space God, which is five tracks long and was titled an acts building up to the fifth act, which is called Space Gods Never Die, which in my opinion is definitely the hardest track off this EP, and has also gained a lot of popularity on both SoundCloud and Spotify. The next project that Kamiata would end up dropping is Pain, Pulse, and Energy, a collab project between Kamiata and the Wild Dutchman. Starting in May to July in 2017, he would release singles from this EP, and tracks like I Need to Medicate and Body Flip would continue to help Kami build his discography and his status in the underground. Going forward into 2018 to 2022, Kami dropped over two albums and four EPs, which I'll dive into later just how successful these projects were. But in terms of story, Kami would end up setting up for festivals at the time, like the Midnight Fest in LA, and eventually Kami would be able to travel throughout Japan in July 2019, doing shows with a local artist named Tais. Tyosin? Ty Tyosin? Which is a Japanese metal artist. Not only this, but Kami would also do visuals for songs like Shinjuku Noa, I think? I'm sorry. So Pretty and Ashes Where I Walk. He would also go to London and explore to do shows there. Kamiata's music, although it's not at like a Drake level, obviously has a wide, wide appeal, reaching to places like Russia, London, and like we talked about Japan, where he gets love from all over due to his aggressive blend of genres. And although I would love to go over everything that Midnight has gone through in terms of members and history, I think I'll probably be saving that for a video in the near future, so, you know. But in terms of story that sums most of it up, we only have one thing left. Kami, as discussed, has pulled music inspiration from almost all corners of the scene. He's also blended multiple genres in his music, which gives him like a generally unique sound. With him being inspired by music in general and not really crediting like one sound or aesthetic to what inspired him, he has also been releasing music for over seven years, and like if you count his early Bandcamp projects, and over time has been exploring a lot of different sounds. With projects like Death Trap 2 and Metal in Me, that shows like his different blend of authentic metal mixed with trap. And because of his experience with the metal and grunge scene, it doesn't really come off as corny or cliche, which is how it does for one heavily popular white ex rap. Yeah. Anyways, my point is, due to his vast array of music knowledge, he knows how to mix sounds. So when diving into Kami's music, I have listened to all of his release projects and EPs, and for this portion I'll also be recommending both EPs and albums, so I'll be giving my personal top 3 projects from Kami. So starting with my third overall favorite project from Kami, it's going to Death Trap 1, which is almost tied with Pain Pulse and Energy, but... You know. Now this could be because I have a sexual attraction to Dutchman's production, but this project is just hit after hit. It has some of my favorite trap metal projects that Kami has dropped to this day, with each beat matching Kami's energy and each track being memorable and catchy and just an overall fun project to listen to. For this one, giving my three usual recommendations, it goes to No Pressure, Demon Mode, and obviously Death Trap. This EP is only six tracks long, so it's a quick listen, but it's, it's worth every second. Going into my second favorite project from Kami, I'm going to give it to Live From Space Volume 2, which I was thinking about going with Live From Space Volume 1, but overall I think this tape executes that sound better and just has more versatility. And for me personally, this tape just has more replay value. But maybe it could be because I've listened to the other one one too many times, but you know. Anyways, this tape is just too good not to give a listen. Uh, this tape also has one of, if not my favorite, Kami songs in general, which is 3AM. This tape is only nine tracks long, so I'm not gonna recommend anything for this one. I just say give it a listen. It's a good project. Going to my number one recommendation, I know this will throw a lot of people for a curveball, and this is a hard decision for me, but it's going to Death Trap too. I could be basic and just go Static Depression for my number one project, and it's it's obviously Static Depression is a good project. I'm not saying either one of them is bad, but in terms of where Kami's been heading with the sound and how he's been developing, this is my favorite project from him going in that direction, and it's just overall my favorite project from him. This tape completely dives into Kami's grunge, punk, and metal side, and it does it really well. I like the mixing on this project on tracks like uh, Too Much For My Head, having a perfect mix of like inflections, that aggression, going back before like a, it's like a yelling and a talking tone. I just, I like all these tracks. I also enjoyed the theme with most tracks having like an intro like Blade Runner and PTSD that really set up like a futuristic, in my mind, a futuristic like war scene that make, it, it, it makes sense. Also, this tape feels like the most like well thought out and well sequenced tape that Kami has put out so far in my opinion, which is why it's my personal favorite. But yeah, that's just me. Anyways, going into recommendations, my top three go to Trust Issues, Red Room, and my favorite track is Bioweapon. Just, just give it a listen. And I guess that's everything. I was going to include some collab tapes like Ducks on Fire with Bambi, but I just wanted to stick to Kami. Just don't, don't take these rankings too seriously. I do these like recommendations at the end of the videos to like showcase the artist and you know like my favorite works from them. If I wanted to, like I said, I could have included Static Depression because I think it is a lot. It's like it's a good project. It has like some of his most popular tracks to this day. But it was just I didn't overall feel like it really showcased where Kami was heading with the sound. 
And yeah, that's the end of the video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Comment, sub, share. Obviously, there's a, a lot of work that goes into these videos. The research takes a long, long time. Editing, doing scripts, that kind of thing. It takes, it takes a long time. Sorry about the delay on these videos also. I'm still a student, I have a job, that kind of thing. So, you know, it, it go, I, I don't really got too much free time, but I put as much time as I can into these videos. But yeah, if you enjoyed the video, sub. Do whatever you do to show appreciation. Follow me on IG. I'm growing over there. I appreciate everyone giving me messages and support and that kind of stuff. Yeah, appreciate it. Next video will be out soon. See you later. Bye.